What's up, Nick fans? All right, I am Victor Hatchba from Nick fans Brazil channel. Today, this channel great I uh, have a great honor. Né? I will receive Tom Tom Sanford, great artist, né? from New York. Thank you so much, né? and welcome to the Nick fans Brazil channel, bro. Let's go, Knicks. <laughs> Let's go, Knicks, bro. <laughs> first of all, first of all, uh, do you can introduce yourself for Brazilians? Sure. Um, my name is Tom Sanford, like you say. Uh, I'm an artist. I live in and work in New York City. Uh, you know, I've, uh, I mean, I'm a sort of a lifetime New Yorker, although I lived in England for a little while when I was a kid. And I've been a Knicks fan since, I guess, about 1989 or 90. When I moved back from England to the States, I was like, you know, 12 years old. And I used to, instead of, like, while I was doing my homework after school, I would, you know, in the evening, I'd watch the Knicks games and uh, not really concentrate on my homework, but um, concentrate on you know, like um, Stu Jackson's bad coaching. <laughs> no, no, he was pretty good. I like <laughs> Stu Jackson, but but I liked uh, I like Pat Riley more. <laughs> um, but, uh, then, but then um, obviously not enough. Uh, oh yeah, you got uh, Pat's book right there. Ah, <laughs> uh, my, um, my my chroma key, no, my chroma key. Uh, yeah, no, I, I know that book. I in fact I was listening, re-listening to that um, as an audio book recently while I was painting a, a John Starks painting recently. Um, ah, great. So it's a great great book. Um, but but yeah, like so. Um, you know, I, I just uh, became a Knicks fan in the early '90s, and so it was a good time to be a Knicks, Knicks fan because, you know, like that's the lead up into the Riley and then the Van Gundy years. And so there was a lot of good seasons, a lot of excitement, a lot of disappointment in the end, but um, <laughs> it was, it was uh, a great time to be a Knicks fan. Like I remember like John Starks, his first game when he played for the Knicks and he hit three, three pointers. If I remember correctly, and I was like, this guy's got to stay. <laughs> Um, ah, I miss so much this team, bro. I miss yeah. so much well, Patrick Ewing, John Starks, Anthony Mason. Well, uh, you know, I love those guys, but you know, this year uh, uh -huh. I love these guys just as much. You know? <laughs> you know, if we can get healthy, this is the year. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. I agree with you. And uh, yeah. this team now it's so great, né? Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, Josh oh, Hart yeah. <laughs> is the face, is the face from New York. Yeah, yeah, no, like of course, yeah. Josh Hart is is probably not as well recognized nationally as as Jalen Brunson is at this point, but he's like the heart and soul of the team, just like Oakley and Mason were the heart and the soul of um, those earlier teams. Uh, you know, he's the, the run he's been on since uh, Julius went out has been just incredible. Uh, yes. You know, the way he plays, he's inspirational. Um, so it's, uh, it's it's a fun time to be a Knicks fan. But there's so many great players, you know, obviously, DiVincenzo, especially mm. last uh, two nights ago with those 11 three pointers, bananas, you know, and then even <laughs> Deuce McBride. My gosh, you know, like uh, he's been a revelation and um, Hartenstein, you know, such gritty play, both offensively and defensively. You know, there's this, this like every player on this team is so likable um, and they, you know, they, they all play with such um, intensity and, they, you know, they, there's, you, it's just a really lovable team and, and they're winning games <laughs> and they'll win more once OG gets back on the court and Julius and Mitchy. So, uh, but the, uh, this team, uh, complete now nah, with Julius Randall and uh, Anunobi, this team is so great for me. I don't have a fear, no team, no team, uh, in NBA. I, yeah. I believe this team can uh, fight, uh, with uh. Another team, another team from me. Uh, I have a fear. Do you know? Mm -hmm. I don't have a fear. This well, yeah, it, I think especially if once we get, if, if OG actually gets healthy, I think he's really mm -hmm. the key. Like, well, I love Julius Randle, and he's um, certainly maybe apart from Jalen, my 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 favorite guy on the team. Yes. I feel like 
um, between Josh Hart and and DiVincenzo, they're able to give us like 80% of Julius. But OG, there's no, we don't have anything like him. You know what I mean? Like he comes in and he's going to add to the team without any subtraction in a way. You know, like because if, if when Randall comes back, he's going to play well. But we're going to lose something from DiVincenzo and Hart because they're just not going to get the minutes. But I think that um, – and so, but he's. I think if we're going to go and make a big playoff run, we need Randall. But I think – to um, more immediately, we need we need OG as soon as possible, you know, because they're playing great. But you but you can't you can't keep on winning forever when you're when you're undermanned like this because it's just so much extra pressure on the players. You know, they're having to play so many minutes. Um, it's it's that's not sustainable. But um, so we, we need we need OG back. <laughs> oh, great defender! Great defender! OG. Yeah. He's- He's uh yeah he's he's like uh the deity of three and D defense he he's amazing. My 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 hurry né? with uh, Miami Heat for example because every game bro every game our players injury with this team this team hurt our yeah. players I yeah, don't yeah. like. I don't like Miami. Yeah, yeah, you no, know, of course. Well, we got a long history of um, <laughs> problems with the Heat, but uh, I, you know, I think this year that we're we're we got we got them this year. If we if we if we play them, they're they're going down. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, what's your expectations with this team in this well, season? I think that if we have um, all three of those guys back. I, you know, I sincerely think we're going to go to the Eastern Conference Finals and we could beat the Celtics. Like, the Celtics are awesome. But I think that we're the only team in the East, if we're healthy, that could beat them. You know, the, uh, the, the road goes Celtics through. Is, goes oh, through Celtics that. have a fear from the Knicks. <laughs> Celtics. <is. laughs> well, they've beaten us a few times this year, but we they've never beaten us at full strength. But we've never really been at full strength either this year. Uh, but uh, our team complete with the Celtics, I believe in yeah, our yeah, team. no, they they can, uh, um, yeah, yeah, they can they can play with anyone. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that if we're healthy, the expectation has to be to at least go to the Eastern Conference Finals. And once you're there, who knows? You know, it could be <laughs> our year. <laughs> Bro, this team deserve uh, uh, Knicks fans deserves a title, bro. Bro, well, well I don't know. Really? If, I don't know if anyone ever deserves anything in life, <laughs> but um, but I think we've been waiting a long time, and long it'd be time. nice. The, the city would love it. You know, when the Knicks are winning, the city is energized. Uh, you know, like when I walk around, if I'm wearing like one of my my Knicks shirts or a Knicks hat or whatever, I, I don't have one on now, you know, you get stopped in the street by strangers, like, you know, let's go Knicks. And I, you start talking Knicks. I got, um, you know, I talk with all my neighbors on the street about how they're doing. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun when they're winning, you know? <laughs> And uh, <laughs> so uh, it'll be, it'll be great spring if, if, if we do well. Ah, great. And uh, I, I want to uh, talk with you about your job i i talk it with you in direct from instagram mm -hmm. and uh, bro amazing amazing your job is amazing <laughs> i i want to talk with you now uh when do you start now with the this job the well, you know it's when i started being an artist yes i always liked to draw and paint from when i was a kid and um naturally you know you you want to draw and paint things you love. And so my work, my, my artwork is not just about sports or just about the Knicks. Like I, I kind of, but the, but um, I sort of paint about my entire life and the, the, I, I feel like the, um, the through line, the, the, in all my work is it, it it's about me. And so being a, a you know, a, a New Yorker and so much of my life being about the places and people I meet and that sort of thing, in my daily life, The New York is a big theme in my work. And um, for me, the Knicks particularly are kind of like the beating heart, heartbeat of New York. You know, like when New York is strong, the Knicks are strong, you know. 
Um, and so I, I've always painted the Knicks. And in recent, you know, I, I, I think my my earliest paintings of Knicks players were from about 25 years ago or so. Um, and, uh, and recently I, I, you know, I ended up, I, a few years ago, I made, um, a, a painting of Clyde Frazier and that led to being in an art show about, about, um, the playoffs. And that led through a whole bunch of different things to me ending up on, on, um, a, a TV commercial on Madison square garden network they, on, on the MSG network. Um, I guess you guys watch the Knicks on MSG, but I'm not yes. sure. Yes. They're, they're always having advertisements with like kind of crazy fans, you know, like there'd be like a guy who drives the A train or the D train or whatever. I guess, I guess it's the A train and he goes, you know, and he, and he always wears a Knicks hat and he goes to the games after his shift. So they put him on it or, or they have this guy, Chris, who is, um, he like has an incredible room full of Knicks memorabilia in his house, or there's like a barber shop that's devoted to the Knicks, et cetera, et cetera. So they they put me on there with with one of my paintings that I was working on at the time of Anthony Mason and did a a, um, a cool little um, commercial with uh, with me, you know, being like a Nick a crazy Knicks fan, which sort of made me kind of like this um, sort of semi-professional Knicks fan, you know, <laughs> so I, I, um, I've been making t-shirts with Bacher back pages, which is, uh, I don't know if you know Bacher back pages, but they make incredible, this guy, Steven, he makes incredible um, Knicks t-shirts, like sort of unofficial merchandise for the Knicks. Uh, and he, every, after every game, he, re he releases a new design that in some way is related to what happened in that game. And so I've made some stuff for him and um, I've got a, I'm going to be in a art show about um, slam magazines, 30 and 30th anniversary of the magazine. So they asked me to do something for that. And I, I made a John Starks painting and I, I ended up um, doing a sneaker with Ewing athletic, um, which is super cool. You know, like I remember those sneakers when I was, you know, in middle school and high school, and I always wanted them, but my parents wouldn't wouldn't buy me expensive sneakers, <laughs> so <laughs> I never I never got them. <laughs> but now I've got tons of pairs, <laughs> so that's kind of cool, you know. Like, um, it, you know, you just if if you uh, the nice thing about art is it kind of it's a great way to meet people and um, involve yourself in in uh, the cultural dialogue. You know, like for me as an artist, you know, I show my art in art galleries, but what I'm more interested in doing is kind of engaging with the culture that my art is about. So over the years, I've made a lot of paintings like when I was younger about the hip hop music that I like to listen to. And that led to like, you know, some cool stuff happening. And more recently, like now, now I'm like an old man. I'm like kind of like a, you know, a, a dad in his late forties. So like, I'm, you know, I, my social life now revolves around like watching Knicks games and playing basketball with my son at the local park. And he, you know, he loves basketball. And so it's just cool to be able to, um, you know, always be talking to him about the Knicks and, and making these uh, paintings and t-shirts and I get to give him them and, um, he goes to school with new Knicks t-shirts every day and like all his <laughs> friends are jealous because he's got like my new Josh Hart t-shirt or whatever. And that's pretty cool, you know. Um, uh, and I just gotten to meet a lot of um, really fantastic Knicks fans like, you know, Anthony MSG or the Knicks Omni fans or, um, you know, Chris Shamus, uh, this guy mm -hmm. talking about the Knicks Nook or th th the list goes on and on. You know, and I, you know, I, um, uh, uh, Casey from Knicks Fan TV, you know, like it's kind of cool because uh, just because of this art that I do, and um, yeah, like now, <coughs> now my my son is hoping that I can get him to start to meet players. So that's my next goal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I saw recently uh, John Starks, né? Uh, you make it, né? Yeah, Bro, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. I, I remember uh, art from, um, forgive my English, okay? Uh, I remember um, Anthony Mason, mm -hmm. you, you, you make it, nah? Yeah, uh, yeah. Art from Anthony Mason, bro. Yeah, Mason make... was always one of my favorites, yeah. I, I make it uh, interviews with Anthony Mason Jr. and oh, okay. Antoine Mason in, in, in my channel. Oh, and uh, I saw, I, I want you send for me the link. 
I, I yeah, won't, I'll, I'll send uh, you all those images. Yeah, yeah. Bro, uh, do you can talk more about this draw about uh, Anthony Mason? I'm sure, you know, like I made that painting last season and um, it was the one that ended up on the, the, the um, MSG ad, you know, um, for me, Mason kind of is like the, the kind of crystallization of like the perfect Nick in a way, you know, he's from Queens. He had a, you know, he had an indirect route to the NBA. You know, he was not a first um, draft pick or anything like that. You know, he played some, you know, he played college ball, but he didn't play for a big program. He, you know, he ends up kind of getting to the Knicks sort of a circuitous route, um, you know, after playing in Turkey and other, other countries and, you know, the CBA and all that. Um, and he's just the toughest player the Knicks apart from debatably Charles Oakley that the Knicks have ever had yeah. you know like or maybe maybe Willis Reed you know he or is another <laughs> um, legendarily tough player but um but Mason um you know the, the the grit and the the generosity of spirit that was Anthony Mason he kind of like lived as hard and played as hard as any player ever and, you know, the fact that he died way too young is, of course, very sad. But I think of him as like the patron saint of Knicks basketball and of Queens. You know, like he's like a he's an, uh, just um, a New York legend. And uh, in many ways, I think he sort he was a, a, a player that changed basketball a little bit. You know, he he's he was well before the time of positionless basketball, but he was a power forward who could like kind of play point guard for the Knicks and that that was a real anomaly at the time. Um, and uh, you know, you just got to love the haircuts. You got to love the style. You got to, you just got to love everything about him. You know, he's just the, he's just like the, the essence of New York in a, in a basketball player. Uh, Josh Hart, it's a new Anthony Mason, a new yeah. John Starks in this team. Yeah, no, absolutely. Josh Hart has that that same kind of intangible um, love for contact and and hustle and grit. And you know, he's he's cut from the same cloth. You know, and he's also very funny, <laughs> just <laughs> just Bro. like those guys were. You know, all the milk, milk. <laughs> the milk. <laughs> Yeah, the milk. Interview, bro. That's, that's why I call him the milkman. You know, I don't know if you are a fan of all of the NBA, but there was a player back when I was a kid who um, was an incredible player, um, Carl Malone, who was called uh -huh. the mailman because the mailman always delivers. So uh -huh. I think that Josh Hart is the milkman. He always <laughs> delivers too. <laughs> uh, I love uh, in our team now because our group is so nah. Uh, you you feel, I am bro. I am uh, uh, in Brazil. I feel in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, this group is so happy. This mm -hmm. guy play each other, bro. Yeah. And uh, I I really believe this team now all or in the future has a chance the uh, a title. Yeah, uh, yeah. Bring a title for us. Yeah. Well, because I, I think Jenna what... Brunson, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, 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 no. You you continue. And uh, I I I saw Jalen Brunson playing, bro. And uh, I feel this team has a a, a star, mm -hmm. uh, a star, a star now because uh, Knicks fans uh, want so, want so so um, uh, have a, a star uh, in the in this team, but now. Jalen Brunson, it's a franchise player. It's a uh, our star yeah. in this team. Well, I, I and, think uh, the, the thing about that that the, the Knicks organization was so smart about um, mm -hmm. and what they identified in in Brunson, and then subsequently the other Villanova players is, you know, Brunson is a guy who always has won, and he's always been a leader. You know, and a, a guy who can do that at high school and college level is going to mm -hmm. be able to do it at the pro level too. You know, like it, there's, there's, there are some players who are incredible athletes, incredible performers. Um, but you need, you need players that can lead you and know how to win. And that's the thing about um, Brunson and DiVincenzo and Hart, you know, they, they've done it over and over 
and they may not be, you know, the biggest sort of um, natural talents in a way, but they have that certain thing that is about winning and, and knowing how to do that. You know what I mean? And, and that was an incredible revelation. You know, um, it was the, the comments been made that, the, you know, like the, Jalen Brunson was drafted relatively low considering he was the best player on a team that won two national championships like that. That was definitely an oversight. You know, it's not an accident that he won that thing twice, you know, like <laughs> um, he, he proved himself and he should have been a higher draft pick. And the Knicks identified that and they got him at a bargain, you know, from the Mavericks. And that that was um, such an incredibly smart move. And then, then you know, they, they traded Cam Reddish. No, no shade on Cam Reddish, but Josh Hart is a winner, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, the, and DiVincenzo, they got him for like, little in the scheme of things um little money and same thing like you know um they they they've just made made smart moves and they they've they've surrounded some you know incredibly talented players like Julius Randle um with players that know how to win and I, now I think they're going to do that winning you know uh what's your opinion about Tom Thibodeau because in Brazil bro uh, it's uh, Nick fans loves and Nick fans hate nah, uh, Tom <laughs> Chimodo because uh, it's uh, so many people Chris, uh, criticize uh, Tom Chimodo about uh, your minutes with these players. Uh, for example, Julius Randle in the, this game with Miami Heat, uh, a, a Brazilians fans uh, criticize uh, Tom Chimbado, uh puts your Julius Randle uh, so many minutes. Uh, Nix uh, wins the game, and uh, I, uh, we saw né, the this team uh, great, uh, has a, a, a win né, winner né, with this game, but uh, Tom Chimbado, uh put Julius Randle uh, so many minutes. Yeah, and uh, and uh, people criticize Tom Timbaldon because about né, the, the these minutes. Uh, what's your opinion about this coach? Well, you, you got to understand, my, my opinion is worth nothing. I, I'm a guy. I love the Knicks and I love watching basketball, but I I have never played organized basketball. You know, when I was when I was a kid, I I I did um, soccer or football, and I did wrestling. <laughs> Those are my sports. I loved playing basketball with my friends at the, at the playground, but I don't know. I don't know anything. Like I, I hear the same criticism and um, you know, and I, I, I love Tibbs, you know, cause he gets wins <laughs> <laughs> and I like, it when, I like it when the Knicks win, <laughs> so, you know, yet I, I understand the criticism that he maybe he, he plays too many minutes in, in the um, regular season and, and maybe it's short sighted, but frankly, um, I think, I think he gets the most out of his players. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think you can criticize his commitment to the game, his focus, and 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 you know, I, I think the results are clear. He goes to the playoff. Mm-hmm. They win a lot of games. He ha- there's an exciting product on the court. Um, you know, there's always going to be sacrifices for that, but I, I'm not going to complain when they're when they're going to get probably going to get 50 wins this season, you know, like yes. Um, injuries happen to players and I guess they're more likely to happen when they're tired and, and, um, and th- th- there's, th- there's something to be said for that criticism, but frankly, I, I'm not going to argue with, with this guy because <laughs> he's made, he's made the last you know, four years of being a yes. Knicks fan, a lot of fun. And yes. the, the um, preceding, you know, like, 15 years with the exception of maybe 2013 kind of sucked. So, so um, I'm, I am a, I'm a fan of Tibbs. No, I do think my a, one criticism is he's, he's got to do something about his hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a, a beer now. Oh. Yeah, the, the, beard, the beard does help. That helps a lot. <laughs> uh, do you believe uh, OG uh, later this season, uh continues in the Knicks or not in your opinion oh I I, I think they're gonna re- they're gonna resign him um that that the, the, you know my my apprehension there though is that um you know that they, they wouldn't have made that they wouldn't have made that trade getting rid of so many of our prospects if they didn't plan to resign him the thing that of course makes one nervous is he's gonna demand very big money 
and he's worth it if he's on the court. But frankly, um, if he's not on the court, he's not worth it. <laughs> so I, I hope he can stay healthy because if we resign him for like $40 million a year, whatever the crazy price is going to be, and he's playing 40 games, then he's not worth it. <laughs> he's got to be, he's got to be healthy. <laughs> um, I won't make a, a short né, in my social media and, and my channel about your draw, uh, John Starks. John uh -huh. Starks, uh, do you can talk more about this draw for us? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll, your here, I'll, go, I'll go get it. I'll go get the painting for you. Ah, okay. <laughs> Just a second. Here's that painting, John Starks. Oh. <laughs> There you go. Um, I'll put it down because, uh, let's see. Can I put it somewhere where you might be able to see it? Put him right here. Sure, sure. Okay, yeah, of course. Can... Ah, fuck. Don't have problem. I, I show this draw. Oh, I'll save uh, <laughs> yeah. ah, Stay up, buddy. Um, <laughs> anyhow, uh, now I got to get out of the way of him. <laughs> don't have a problem i will show nah, um the... yeah no I, yeah we'll put them on the screen um i don't know like uh, so for this painting slam magazine which is a big basketball magazine here that's been around since i guess the mid 90s are celebrating 30 years and and they asked 30 different artists to make paintings based on a um, a cover from the magazine um for this art exhibition that they're putting on, which is going to open next week here in New York. And they asked me if I could do a painting. And I think they probably came to me late in the game because when, when they asked me um, if I, if I would um, paint, uh, paint one, it, they don't want anyone to paint the same cover. So each one has to be, a, each artist takes a different cover. And a lot of the covers were already taken and um, like all the Carmelo Anthony covers have been mm -hmm. taken and like of course like the lebron james's and stuff something like that um but first of all they never had a cover with patrick ewing on the cover and had there been a cover with patrick ewing i probably would have gone with patrick um but um it, but maybe not because like you know while um you know patrick is probably my favorite nick maybe not um it, it's so difficult but um but <laughs> John Starks is definitely the Nick with the most famous dunk and it is slam magazine. So, you know, uh, I, when I saw that John Starks was available, it was a pretty easy choice, you know, like, first of all, I'm an old guy. So the nineties is my, was my time, you know, like that's when I was young. Um, and, and, um, I, you know, I love Starks that dunk is the greatest Nick dunk ever. And so I definitely wanted to do it. And, There isn't much of the painting except for I you know I was kind of um, interpreting the the cover. I'll send you the cover of the Slam magazine, but I was sort of um, redoing the, the famous cover. But in the in the cover, um, the, on the cover of the magazine, they kind of cropped out his feet. You couldn't really see his sneakers, and it, uh -huh. I didn't like that. I, I thought that I should make sure that you could see the sneakers, so I put the sneakers like kind of po poking out to the sides. And I wanted to get them exactly right. And um, John Starks used to wear the Adidas Intruder sneakers. And so I, I had to get them just right, you know, because I, I think that the little details like that are important. You know, like I, I don't I never make my, um, you know, jerseys or my sneakers generic. I want them to be like pretty accurate. Um, so I put a lot of effort into, <coughs> into getting those intruders just right. But um I'm, you know, I'm excited to be in the exhibition and meet up, meet many of the other artists who are um, making these other um, basketball paintings. And uh, it's a great honor for me because it's like this, it, it again, it, it's kind of like interacting with the culture as opposed to interacting with like the art world. And I'm much more interested in the culture of mm -hmm. um, popular culture that I am inspired by um, than, than the art world itself. So it's, um, I'm just, I'm, uh, you know, hyped to be in the show. Do you can talk for us uh, the future draw? Do you think? Do you can? Do you can uh, uh, tell me for a, a secret, a, a draw? <laughs> you think in the future about well, the 
I'm, I'm sure I will keep on making Knicks paintings from time to time. And, and certainly if we uh, go far in the playoffs, I'll, I'll, I, I haven't made a Jalen Brunson painting yet, but I've got to make one, you know, um, I haven't decided exactly what I would do. In fact, I told I got a good friend, um, this guy David Kramer, yeah. who's also, <laughs> yeah, who's also <laughs> well, um, like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who's also an artist and a Knicks fan. And back in the '90s, David Kramer had a studio in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and he made a huge sign that he put on the roof of his studio building that said like Anthony Mason and it had like a 14. And so I told him that if the Knicks win 10 games in a row, I'm going to make a Jalen Brunson and, and uh-huh. put the Jalen Brunson on my house, you know? And so we haven't, we haven't won. We, we won it nine in a row this year. I think we haven't won 10 in a row yet. So when that happens, I'll definitely do that, but I got to make a Jalen Brunson painting. Um, I got something kind of fun. That's going to be coming out pretty soon. Um, I, I collaborate with this guy, Steven, who does Bacher back pages and we're doing a little line of merch for the, for the roommates podcast. And so I've got a roommates t-shirt coming out pretty soon with, um, you know, with, with Josh and Jalen in it. And like there in my, in my drawing, I'm not going to show it yet. Cause I, I don't, I don't want, I want to, don't want it to not be a surprise, but they're wearing a pajamas and like they're playing basketball in new york city because they're like roommates but <laughs> they were in college i guess uh I, but yeah what uh no i i just uh i have a mention uh, i want in the future your draw about the nick fans brazil bro i want oh, okay. because bro i love your job i love oh, really okay. really and uh, I want uh, you make a, a draw for the Knicks fans Brazil. In well, maybe, maybe we can make a Knicks fan Brazil T-shirt together. Yes, yes. <laughs> you, you can sell it to make money. <laughs> no, because in in, in in this channel, I won't make a trip uh, from New York. Now, I I I will make it in this year because, uh, but in this year it's very complicated now, because money. And my <laughs> my dog, and my dog has a, a cancer. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to hear. And um, it's very complicated because uh, this dog and your sister, nah, the, these dogs uh, are um, um, my mother died, nah, uh, and for five years ago nah? mm-hmm. and these dogs uh remember my my life with my mom in brazil yeah uh, it's very complicated for me yeah yeah of course and uh i will go to new york so far away I, yeah, well, don't I worry because new, york, new york's not going anywhere we'll, we'll be here when you have time and it's not less not so complicated so 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 come in a, in a year or two yeah. <laughs> bro i i when i i i will go to new york i i will feel in home because I, you you're americans now nah? americans uh make me so good so uh, feel so good now nah? I, I i really feel at home in home with the, with the, you guys because nick fans brazil i i make it now nah? more so many interviews with Americans and uh, always like you, for example, uh, receive me so, so good. So, so, and uh, I feel great with you guys. And uh, uh, I, likewise, we, we hope you come. You'll be, you'll be, everyone's at home in New York. Cause like <laughs> everyone, everyone's here, you know, it's uh, we, we've got, we've got Brazilians, we've got people from all over the world and uh we we uh, we like to welcome the world. Uh, and I uh, thank you, thanks so much, bro. Thanks so much, Tom. Um, really, uh, forgive nah, my bad English in this interview, but uh, I don't have a interviews <laughs> a long right. time with Americans, and yeah. I need to nah, practice more with well, you, we, you we need guys. To practice our Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> and uh really it's a great honor it's a great uh, honor well, thanks, receiving uh, you thanks, in this thanks for um thanks for interviewing me um, i uh, i'm the one who should be honored you know like uh, thanks for the interest very cool i'm, I'm, I'm honored <laughs> and 
uh, I, I, I hope, né? See you in New York when uh, I make yeah. it this trip. Yeah, hit me up. Like, um, I'm, I'm up in Harlem. You come by. We'll uh, get a beer, watch the Knicks game. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so great, bro. Thank you. Thanks so much. And thank you, everybody, né? Uh, see the, this interview. And let's go, Knicks, bro. Let's go, let's Knicks. Go, Knicks. Let's go, Knicks.